Hey, hey, I hope you are well. Today, I'm just gonna run through my brand new in-ear monitor rig, how I've got it set up, how I'm running it within my Ableton set, and the effects that I'm using on my board. Let's go. <laughs> So my band, The Dave Webb Project, is finally up and running and we are gigging, which is awesome. And this setup right here is exactly what we use for our in-ear monitors. And well, let's just go through it and start from the bottom. We're using the Behringer XR18 digital mixer, which is brilliant, it's super flexible. There was a little bit of a steep learning curve, especially for me, and I don't fully understand everything that it has to offer just yet, but the way we use it, it is brilliant. I have had it for quite a while and I've used it for my cover gigs quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. So it is completely digital. You've got a little antenna here in the front in order to connect it to the Wi-Fi so you can run the apps either on your laptop or on your iPad. Now, it's not great, which I'm sure you are all aware of. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a little cable coming out of here and there's a router just in the back there. I'll get a shot of that one. And all you need to do is just make sure you've got the switch on the right one. Uh, you connect it to the Wi-Fi router and it opens up this cool app and everything is on there. If you haven't seen these before, this is what it looks like. And you've got all your EQs and such in there. Shows you a real-time analysis as well when you've got audio coming in and the little green bars coming up and down. It's fantastic. So that's what we use to mix our ears. That doesn't go to the front of house. Front of house does that separately, which I'll explain in a moment. So this is pretty much connected and ready to go all the time. We don't have to change anything. Our settings on our mixer is exactly the way that we like it. We don't have to change it. It's easy to go every gig. Now, next up here, I've got the splitter, also from Behringer. This is the MS8000. That thing's pretty cheap. So if you're looking at a splitter, that thing's brilliant. It's eight channel. I have two because I thought that I would need two, but turns out I can get away with eight. So all of these cables here on the front, they are all running through underneath and they connect into the back of the splitter here. Now that looks kind of like this, or rather exactly like this. Basically, you've got all of these colored ends on that end and then the related colors on the other end. These things are great. All of these labels on here, I bought those and labeled them myself. I've got drums, guitars, vocals, and bass, and there's a spare one which relates to that if and when we need it. And as you can see, obviously, they relate to the relevant cables. So the setup that we use is 100% digital, including the drummer. He uses one of those Roland digital drum kits, which is like this massive space station, but it sounds great all the time. So we plug him in in stereo, so he goes into these two. I use the GT1000 core. It goes in here in stereo. Bass is just in mono, and my vocals are also in stereo because I've got some delays that are going left and right, so I want that to happen as well. So what happens then is we get out plugs, so from the guitar or from the board, from the drums, from the bass, they go into the front here. It splits the signal. The signal that comes to our ears goes out the back of that, around into the inputs here, and then we can mix that and it gets sent to us when we mix that. The other side, we have this bigger splitter cable, which of course I have labeled as well. Now they come out of the other side of the splitter and they go into front of house mixing desk or you've got a stage box and do it normally. Now on the weekend, we just did a gig and it was super easy. He had all of our slots ready to go. So I showed up, plugged in, boom, it was easy. Which was a very satisfying feeling actually. Normally you rock up with such elaborate setups and they think this wank is gonna be time consuming and a pain in the bum, but they were like, wow, easy. We've mixed you, great. So then, in order to monitor ourselves, we've got one of the Shure PSM 300 transmitters. This is great, so me and the bass player, we both share that one and we both use a very similar mix, so that is actually really quite convenient. We bought the one that was the dual pack, so it came with one of these and two of these. In there, we've got one of the little transmitters and our ears in the little pouch there. This thing's fantastic. Uh, the connection is super duper easy. You press scan, you press scan, you sync it, and away you go. It's really that easy, and we haven't had any issues. It does unfortunately use batteries in there. You can get rechargeable ones from Shaw, but at this point in time, it's getting a bit expensive, so we're just gonna wait on that one. I have no doubt that somewhere down the track, we're gonna get a second one of these PSM 300 transmitters, pop it in there. That way we don't have to compromise with our mixes and we can have whatever we want. So our mix is coming out of just the phones with just the monitor out. So it's that simple little control there. I found that just a little bit easier. Now it's just a standard stereo TRS on that end. And we've got two monos which go into the back of this. And we've got an overall volume on the front there. And it's, it's basic, it's easy, it works. 
I really like it. For the drummer, we've got a Behringer P1. This is a powered thing, so you've got to plug some power into here, and with that just goes into the back of that. And then these cables are always attached, and we plug these into his two auxiliary outs here, and he does whatever he does there. He has a really bizarre mix, I don't even want to get into that. And he's wired because he sits, obviously he doesn't have to go anywhere, so we just pops that right near him and he adjusts it as he needs it. Let me just flip this around so you can see inside the back a bit better. So at this point in time, that's what's going on. This is obviously the in-ear transmitter. We've got the splitter in there. As you can see, all of these are already connected and labeled. We've got the little router up here. Got the mixer there. At this point as well, I've only got this little power board across the bottom. Eventually, I'm gonna get like a, a proper power conditioner. I just don't know how much space that's gonna take up, so it might not fit, and I might have to get a different case. And the case is great. I'll put the specs just here somewhere. It's lightweight. It comes already preloaded with the holes. And on the back panel of the case, it comes with this little zipper section. So we've got a couple of microphones and the pouches that have our in-ear transmitters as well. So that's awesome. It just comes with us everywhere. Now you've all seen different versions of my pedal board. At the moment, this is how I'm running it. I've got the GT1000 Core, the Big Sky. I've got the Boss VE500 for the vocals. I'm using the Terra Echo, the Dimension C, the Black Hole Reverb, and the Morningstar MIDI controller, which is the bomb. And I've got my little pick tin in there as well. That's all powered by a Chucks DC7 power supply. Now, unfortunately, the board that I have is a little bit small. I'm gonna be getting one of the Diodario Expand 2 boards. The size of that looks to be pretty much perfect for what I need. So I need to add in my Kirkhamet Wah, which I use every once in a while. And I've also just got the Boss WL60 wireless transmitter, which is also freaking amazing. It's so good being wireless. And to power those, I've just got a little extra sort of connection there, which again, like I said, is not ideal, but I'm gonna expand upon that, huh, pun intended, eventually. Now, if you have one of these and you've experienced any sort of, sort of glitching or something wrong with the sound, uh, I had this the other day and it's brand new. I thought, what the hell's going on? Turns out I had it sitting literally about this far from the mixer and the Wi-Fi router is right in there. Turns out if you keep it too close to a Wi-Fi router, that's gonna interfere with the digital signal. So I think Boss recommend, I think it was about three meters at least between any sort of other digital Wi-Fi thing and this. Since adjusting, it's been absolutely fine. Now, another reason why we wanted to use the in-ear monitor rig is because we play to a click track and we have backing tracks to help accent the song. Now I have been battling with the whole use of backing tracks the entire time whilst I've been putting this together, but end of the day, it sounds amazing and you know, pretty much everyone uses backing tracks these days, so I don't care, it sounds great. And also it allows us to have this perfect seamless set. We have a bit of ambience in between songs and it just works. And also not only am I now free from cables and I don't have to trip on things, but everything is triggered in the set in Ableton and sends a message to my pedal board and I don't have to stomp anything. So everything I play, I don't have to think about the effects, I can just play and focus on the part and you know, I'm likely to make less mistakes. I'm not gonna deep dive into that, but I'm gonna show you really quickly just how I've got it set up and what you need if you're thinking about doing that. So in order to do this properly, what you're gonna need is obviously a laptop that is running your set. I have a MacBook Pro and I've chosen to use Ableton as I said. If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that I prefer to use Cubase. In this case, I chose to use Ableton because I thought the routing would be way easier and realistically, it kind of was very easy. But at the same time, I think if I put the same amount of effort into Cubase to figure that out, it would have been either just as quick or quicker probably because I actually hate using Ableton, but the routing, in all honesty, is brilliant. Anyway, what you're gonna need is a cable to connect your mixer to your laptop. Now, I found one of these online somewhere, so that goes into the mixer and that goes into the new MacBook plug. So it just goes into the USB hole and then obviously plug the other end of your computer. So just one more thing that I forgot to mention, the tracks are being sent out of these two auxiliary outs just here. I've got them labeled track and track. And obviously on the mixer, we only send the tracks to those two outputs. And I've got two leads that plug into there and also go into the stage box. So this is what the set looks like in Ableton. We've got something like 13 songs at the moment in the set. So we just adjust accordingly per gig. Obviously when you open Ableton, you want to go to your preferences and select the mixer here. I've got the samples super duper low so that there is a bit more latency. So it's not so much real time processing. And also to keep that processing quite low, that's why I'm using the Boss vocal processor, the V, 
E500. I've got all my effects in there. I thought that if I ran vocals through Ableton and then had effects triggered in the door, it would just add obviously more workload to the computer and there'd be more chance of things mucking up and I didn't want that. So basically every track here, I've labeled at the top with the name of the song. These two here, these are the guide tracks that I use for when I'm just jamming along when the other guys can't make it. So that's the drums and the bass. If we have a look in here, you can see I've got the tracks per song. So those sorts of things are just, you know, extra noises, ambient sounds, explosions. Uh, there's one song that has a piano, there's synth noises, that sort of stuff. Just the things that I can't, or we can't replicate just the three of us. So those are the sounds that are needed for the songs and we play along to those. Obviously the click is automated per track and that down here looks like that convoluted mess. Also, you'll see that I've got all these locators coming along here. Now, all of those, initially we had it on the laptop, so if I press any of the buttons, it goes to a, that specific song, but that's not manageable. You don't want to be going playing with a laptop on stage while you're trying to perform, because then it looks like you're doing something fake. So what I've done is I've mapped everything onto my MIDI controller on the floor. So how do I get to that? A long ass USB cable. Now, I didn't have a long ass one, so I've got a couple of connections and I've taped them up, but it works absolutely fine. So this one is into the USB on the Morningstar controller, and then this runs across the stage, creates a trip hazard, and plugs into the laptop, into a dongle because we've got, you know, this old school version and Mac decided to change their plugs because thanks. And so now that MIDI cable, what it's doing, it's allowing me to control the set from my pedal board. I don't have to go to the laptop, I can press it over here. So, I'll bring you over. You can see I've got all of my songs labeled across here and there's the click, stop, play, and a next button. Next, just takes me to the next few songs. Pretty straightforward, double tap there to bank back down just in case I muck that one up. So now if we have a look at the set, now I did have an intro, I've gotten rid of that so that I need to move those around, but if we look at borders, number one, number two, number three, it's brilliant. And if we go back to number one and I press play, the whole session now plays and the session stops. How good is that? And also, like I said, I have all of these patches on my pedal board being triggered by the song. So when it gets to the intro, it has that particular sound, it's triggered. When it gets to the chorus, it's triggered again. How that happens is that you do need to set up a whole bunch of MIDI notes. So the voice MIDI, for example, is all those notes across there. They trigger a change on the VE500. Then the guitar MIDI, the GT1000, the Big Sky, and the Black Hole. Now, why have I got these numbers? Because that's the MIDI channel number that relates to the pedal. I forget what the voice MIDI is, but I probably should write that one in. But of course, whenever it gets to this point in time, and I haven't labeled all of them, but I've labeled some. But for example, that's gonna be a lead on the GT1000, that's the patch I've saved, and I make it a whole reverb on my Big Sky. So why did I use a Big Sky and not just a reverb in the GT1000? I found being able to keep the same patch and change a reverb on a separate pedal easier than trying to change the reverb within a patch or change the whole patch just for a reverb because if you try to change the reverb inside the GT1000 patch, it has to reload the whole patch and you'll hear a very slight glitch. Whereas if you do it with the Big Sky, you don't hear a change, it just keeps going and it's a bit more seamless and it's great. The black hole, it speaks for itself. It's awesome, it's on the pedal board. So there is one more lead that you're gonna need and that is, I've got this long ass MIDI cable. This goes out of the XR18. So Ableton is sending MIDI messages into the XR18, which passes through, comes into my Morningstar, which also sends all of the triggers to each of my effects. So the V500, the Big Sky, the GT1000, and the Black Hole Reverb, reverb they all change per song, per patch, to exactly the way I want them. So all you do there is plug this one into the out hole, because obviously it needs to come out, and then into the input, on the morning star. Now this kind of thing to me used to be perceived as absolute witchcraft. I come from a background where it was just a couple of guys in a shed, then we go to a gig and we'd replicate the shed stuff. But that's what you did, you know, this sort of thing just wasn't heard of. And now it's so achievable, it's amazing. So if we have a look here, go to song one, bring it over here, watch the pedal board play, 
And we saw the GT1000 change there. That's fine. Let's go to find in the next patch. Then we go to this section. Things are going to change again. Look at that hole on the big sky. It's amazing. And then when we get to the verse, clickety-do, and it changes. That's a pretty brief rundown of the set right there, but you kind of get the idea. There's a whole bunch of MIDI notes. Now, whilst this was very, very easy, it was so stupidly time consuming and it's still not 100% finished. If we go back to this page, if we have a look here on the voice MIDI, it goes to the XR18 and it goes to MIDI channel 10. And if we went across to the guitar here, same thing, channel four, channel six, channel seven, that way no messages are getting confused. So that right there is more or less how this all works. It's fantastic, it was a bit of a setup. It's taken time, it's taken a bit of cash, and there's still a few tweaks that need to be made. Like I said, the pedal board needs to get a bit bigger, and a few things need to be added to this. But for the most part, it's absolutely seamless. When you get to a gig and you can just be like, hey, here's all our lines, and especially because everything is digital, the mix is just easy. We set it the way we want it, and they just tweak it for the room. Bang, done. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time.